So I don't think there'll be one choice point, one converging point where everything has to happen. I think we are moving through a succession of choice points, through a succession of smaller choices, smaller awakenings, smaller awarenesses. And I think that we, if we continue to bring our awareness to those small awarenesses, then, then we are increasingly awakened, increasingly aware. And uh, I kind of, in my head, I think a bit like a lot of people talking about the more public and more people becoming more aware and more enlightened, that it's as if there's going to be this big bang, this big epiphany, and uh, suddenly everyone's going to get it, or suddenly everyone's going to go, oh, hang on a minute, wait, wait, wait. And, and I don't think that's going to happen. Increasingly, things are starting to sink in, and people are starting to go, hang on, hang on a minute. That doesn't make any sense. So I can go and do that, but I can't do that. So so this is okay, but that's not okay. What, how, who made that decision and why? And uh, and where does that come from? And slowly but surely, people are going, well, do we have a say in that? Who who decides that? How come people that decide these things have a, a vested interest, a clash of interests, have an investment in it? Our stakeholders in these decisions, uh, what does that mean? Because these, some of the things that we're facing at the moment are very unnatural, very unhealthy, unhealthy and natural. So why is it, as you know, as quite a few people are sort of questioning now that uh, you can't be with people and you can't, um, even in some places in America, buy seeds and grow healthy food and have, get, get access to healthy food, but, um, alcohol is considered a necessity <laughs> and and there's lots of things like this so you just go mm, well, but now I, I don't want to take anybody's strategy away from them if that's the strategy that they're getting through uh, a difficult time with but sedation only works for a period of time to, to, to get missing resources or missing bits of information or re-establish connection and community or re-establish safety or allow oneself the opportunity to, to come to an awareness and an understanding. If it's ongoing sedation, what is the purpose of that? So I think the more people are starting to say, well, what's the purpose of that? Even if it's uncomfortable, it's a series of smaller awakenings. Now I'm going around in circles a bit myself because I have these big ideas and then I feel tired again and big ideas and have tired and, and, and having had chronic fatigue, it would be very easy to say, oh, well, am I slipping back into these older patterns of, you know, wanting to just sleep? But this is not normal. So you have to remember that when we heal something, we heal it within a certain context, within a certain... Think of these cymatics that I show now, you know. You, this, we've got incoming and we've got process and we've got the best stability and the best um, homeostasis that we can create. But that never stops. And when there's still incoming and still incoming and still incoming, and when there's no solution, we have an ongoing um, allostatic load. So allostasis is homeostasis out of whack, if you like. So when in uh, German New Medicine you talk about the two phases, the two phases are, are really are, are what's called allostasis. And, and the more threshold factors you, you know, the more plates you're spinning, the more your allostatic load. And the more your allostatic load, the more exhausting it is because your your energy for your systemic health uh, and bodily functions and critical thinking and all of that is really being used for survival, for, for maintaining a, a, an overwhelm of income. And really, most illnesses are an overwhelm of something incoming that can't be processed, either because what's overwhelming is more toxic and, and puts you out of balance more, therefore you need to use your other resources to create balance, or you don't have the resources to maintain that uh, ability to, to keep on going, creating that balance. And really that's what a lot of people are now experiencing, a lot of stress, a lot of stress because it's unnatural, it's not normal. So I don't think there's going to be this big epiphany, this big bang, this big aha moment for the general population. There's just a lot of incremental clicks, you know, this ratcheted effect of 
Yeah, hang on, that's not quite right. Mm, okay. Oh, well, that's a bit odd too. Oh, well, and even if that's a resistance, even if someone is pushing back and saying, well, I'm just going to keep doing the lockdown, um, and you know, and, and I don't know if there's a virus out there, it could kill me, so I'm, I'm scared, so I'm going to stay at home and let the government and the doctor sort it all out. That, there's nothing wrong with that, that's fine. But when suddenly healthy debate is quashed, alternative views are quashed, uh, rights are taken away for freedom of expression, freedom to dissent, freedom of assembly. If, if all the people who have been supposedly diagnosed as infected, why can't they meet each other? That's not going to make any difference, is it? But I'm sure there'll be an excuse or a reason. Or all the piece, people that have been tested and proven not to have it, why can't they get together? Um, and I know there's this talk about incubation period and all that sort of stuff, but it doesn't add up. You know, it just doesn't add up. So why can't we do A, B and C, but we've got to do these other X, Y and Zs kind of stuff? Uh, every day you'll have choices and decisions. And every day things are happening in the background that you're not aware of and you might not want to know. I know so many intelligent people saying, well, I can't possibly, I don't know, I don't, I don't understand it all. I'll just, I'll just do what I'm told because I don't understand it. And that's what most people are doing. But these are smart people. Well, these are smart people who are getting upset when other people have a different view. And I've had really smart people sort of suggest that by me offering an alternative view, that I'm kind of inciting some sort of unlawful, life-threatening behavior just by having an opinion. That's weird. That's really weird. So, you know, when someone says, well, I'm not speaking out of fear, I'm just saying that you should be careful what you say. Why? Are you that arrogant that you think other people are too stupid to think for themselves? Because that's one of the things that I get triggered by. Not that people might say I'm stupid, but that somehow other people can't think for themselves. I would rather people question and think, question, but please, please question what I say, because at least you're thinking for yourself. But don't trot out some other person's quote without questioning that too, right? And that would be really healthy to question the things that we quote and the things that, that um, we agree with and don't agree with. So every day we have a choice. Every day we can decide to look after ourselves. We can take the time for rest, take this opportunity to take some rest, but not to hibernate. Resting and still thinking for yourself is not the same as hiding away and hoping that... Well, I don't know what people are hoping for. To be honest, I really don't. Because the flattening the curve thing, you know, the argument of flattening the curve is supposedly not to stop people dying, it's to take the pressure off our resources. And I'm not going to say NHS, I'm going to say resources. Um, so, do people suddenly, and now there's talk of a second wave. Well, I can absolutely guarantee you there's a second wave because all of the people that were put under pressure now and lied to now, that are getting pissed off now, all the people that were turned into heroes and were not allowed their own humanity and their own needs and their own fears and their own uh, you know, weaknesses, they are going to be pretty ill. So is that because they've suddenly caught something or they've got an illness? No, it's because they were put under pressure. It's because they weren't treated humanely. It's because everybody took the piss by making them a hero and uh, you know, didn't look at the bigger picture and look at everything that was going on. So I'm just watching the <laughs> dogs. <laughs> so, so I think incremental, step by step, it is time to uh, decide what you're thinking about, decide where your intention is, decide where your humanity is. Where's your humanity? Are you not seeing family members? I'm sick of seeing these things on the telly where Old people are putting hands up to the people in the window because they're not allowed to touch them. It's bollocks. It's rubbish. Those people are separated and, and, and isolated. And how come care home staff can go home, go in, look after people, go home, go to their children, go back, go home, and yet family can't see people? How, how can you know? How, how can it be that it's okay for one person to do it but not another? Uh, is that flattening the curve or is that selective control? You've got to decide. 
and you've got to decide what is going on with freedom of speech, freedom of right to assemble, freedom of a right to, these are human rights, a right to family, uh, freedom to dissent, disagree, freedom to choose to, to say no to that which is of harm, um, and there's enough proof to, st you, if you want a vaccine, have a vaccine. If you believe in it, that's great. I don't need it then, do I? Because you've had a vaccine, you're not going to catch anything. And if I get it, that's up to me. Right? I'll sign a waiver that says I don't want medical attention if I get ill. I'll do that. So perhaps we should have a waiver that says we don't want resources if we've actively chosen not to have a vaccine. And, and, and those that have the vaccine uh, who want to have it can have it. That's okay. I'm, I'm very happy with that. But get the story straight. You can't say vaccines only work if everyone has them. Well, if vaccines work, they work. If vaccines work by getting your body to create the antibody, well, I'll do that naturally. Thank you very much. So there's lots of things that are coming to, the, to, to light that which, were, which weren't coming to light before. There are lots of things which are coming into the open. So remember, as you breathe and allow yourself into your own energy, you're here for a reason. You're here to be the unique you that you are. You're here to have your own view and your own opinion and make sense. And if you feel separate and allow yourself to become an, in the animal survival, you'll have a very different experience to one if you become aligned and breathe and understand that you are consciousness. You are an expression of consciousness in this mammalian human herd animal animal existence we all have animal fears we all need to subsist we need food we need shelter we need air and water we all need because we're herd animals to be part of the herd to belong to be valued to be relevant everybody needs to feel that they're relevant and that they're a value to the rest of the herd that's why we're having this whole fawning thing at the moment. I'll fawn over you because I don't, I don't, I'm not a value. So I'll become a value because I'll kiss your ass and make you feel better. That's fawning. Don't throw me out of the group because I'm scared. Um, so if I kiss your ass or if I, if I, if I you know, fawn over somebody else, then, then I'm, of more, I'm not a threat and I'm a value. So the person that stands up and says, I'm sorry, I'm not doing that because that's actually not healthy for the person I'm fawning over. Um, is, ooh, you're not in the group, you're dangerous, you're out. The herd mentality is you're in or you're out. Guilt and shame work to moderate behaviour, and if the behaviour cannot be moderated, you're, you're shamed and pushed out. So shame to change and moderate, if not, shame to eliminate or exile. And because people are afraid of that, because they're afraid as animals, they are not safe to be themselves and say hang on i'm i'm afraid you know I'm, I'm i love you as my family but you have this view and i don't and, and uh, obviously they risk rejection so we kind of toe the line and uh, the the big model at the moment is fawning over um people people they are they are a value i'm not saying they're not a value but we're all a value we're all a value and uh the more we realise we're all consciousness, the healthier that's going to get. The more we take responsibility for what we allow, the better. So, reflect. Reflect your consciousness. Reflect your purpose. Reflect the fact that you're here at this time doing something very, very important. And I'm going to set up a series of webinars to just keep uh, seven ways and seven days, seven things we can do, seven realities that we're ignoring and seven exercises that we can do together, including family and kids and including introducing the Wellbeing Exchange Programme, which is beginning to start sort of smaller satellite groups that can eventually all link up and share helping people feel safe and uh, that they have what they need, valued, that they can do enough and that they uh, are acknowledged and that they are relevant and 
that people feel that they can be the expression of consciousness. They are a unique expression and they're witnessed and they are validated and that we can bring those gifts out into the tribe. So the Wellbeing Exchange is a, like a, it's like a witness program, if you like. People can feel witnessed, feel they belong and feel safe. And these, uh, these, I hope, will tie in with lots of other concepts about exchange groups, labour exchanging groups, uh, labour and skills exchange and community community groups that people start to look after each other. So watch this space. We're going to start introducing these things. So that's my thought for Sunday afternoon. It's raining, but it's beautiful. The dogs are waiting to go, though, so we'll go. Keep breathing into the heart. Keep pushing that heart energy out to reach others. Flow, align, and flow. You are not separate. You are not separate.